Can you get in trouble as a passenger in someone else's car? Are there passenger rights? What if someone in the car is doing something illegal, but you weren't driving? Hi, I'm Jeff Hampton with the Hampton Law Firm. Today I want to talk about that question. What if you are in a vehicle, maybe you're just in the passenger seat, and maybe the driver of that vehicle has drugs in the car. Maybe they're carrying something illegally. You didn't know anything about it. What rights do you have? Can you still get in trouble? By the way, if you wait around to the end of this video, I'll also give you a free ebook, What to Do If You Have Been Charged With a Crime in Texas. Okay, so let's talk about this for a second. I'm just gonna tell you, this has actually come up multiple times. This happens a lot when I talk to parents. They talk about their kids. They're like, look, my son's 17. He's riding around with all of his buddies. My worry is, what if the kid he's riding around with, maybe he's got some marijuana in the car, maybe there's a gun in the car. What happens if they get pulled over? Is this gonna be a situation where my son could get arrested? And the reality of it is, the answer to this question is, yes, you still can get arrested. And let me just explain, we'll break that down. It kind of, there is a little bit of a yes and it depends if you can be convicted. But number one, here's where it's a very big deal. What if there's something illegal in the car, but that, it, that illegal drugs, for instance, let's say it can be linked to the passenger, and we're talking about passenger rights here, but what if the police officer did not have a legal right to stop the car? Okay. In other words, what if there is a traffic violation that wasn't a traffic violation and the officer pulls that person over, the driver of the car, and maybe there is a basis for a motion to suppress, to throw that out. Does that same ability to have a motion to suppress apply to the passenger in the car? Not always. And here's why. Under uh, Supreme Court law, there's a, there is a concept known as standing. In other words, you must have standing in court to contest an illegal activity by the police. Well, most uh, Supreme Court precedent has established that a passenger in a car has no standing to contest whether or not that vehicle was illegally pulled over. So that means that per unless you're the person driving the car, you can't claim you have protection because the officer illegally pulled you over. So that becomes an issue. We've actually seen uh, individuals that the car was illegally pulled over. The officers end up finding other things in the car or on the person of other passengers. And it turns out they're able to still bring legal action against them. Doesn't seem fair, but that's what the actual standard is under Supreme Court law. Okay. Now, let's talk about this though. Let's use the example we've already talked about, and now we're discussing what if it's possession of drugs like marijuana, what if it's a gun? Well, you still, the state of Texas must still prove beyond a reasonable doubt that when it, the element of possession, and understand what possession means. Under the law, the officer or the district attorney's office must prove that you intentionally or knowingly exercised care, custody, or control over the illegal substance or weapon, whatever we're talking about here. So the best example of this is, we actually represented a, a young man who was a passenger in a car, and he was pulled over, his buddy was driving the car. He gets pulled over on the side of the road, and in the center console is illegal drugs and a gun. So what happens is the officers get them all out of the car, get both of them out of the car, and they start questioning them, right? Neither one of them say anything. They don't admit to it. They say, I have no idea what you're talking about. It's not mine. So now the officers have to do what they call affirmatively link that illegal substance or weapon to one of the people driving or the one of the people in the vehicle. That can be a difficult thing to do, particularly if not if one person doesn't confess to having knowledge of, of being able to, uh, of those, of the drugs or the gun. Now, why is that? Here's why. Merely being in the presence of a crime does not mean you committed that crime. The, the state of Texas must prove that you intentionally or knowingly, in other words, you, they have to prove criminal intent. They have to prove that you had knowledge of it. Merely being it being within your wingspan, merely it being near you is not sufficient. And why? I mean, it only makes sense. What if you're a passenger in a car and someone else, the driver, stuffs his drugs underneath your seat before you got in the car and you had no, no idea it was there? Of course, that's not fair and it shouldn't be that you are, end up being convicted for that because you didn't know it was there, 
regardless of the fact that police did a search, that this is where it becomes very important that you're working with a criminal attorney that understands these concepts. Because one of the best ways to fight this in that moment is if it's a felony drug charge or weapons charge, this type of information can be presented to a grand jury where it may be possible that the entire felony case could be thrown out by what's known as a no bill, okay? And even if it's a misdemeanor drug or gun charge, that's important too because these issues must be presented to show that the state of Texas does not have evidence to prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt. Okay, that's a quick summary of the situation. Do you really have rights as a passenger in the car? Eh, not really. You may not have standing. However, the state must still prove the elements of the crime. And if it wasn't your car and you weren't driving, that can sometimes be a difficult thing for them to do. So I want to invite you, if you have a case or a family member that has a case like this in the North Texas area, don't hesitate to contact our office at the Hampton Law Firm. You see the number above. We'll be happy to give you a free consultation. But either way, I promised you a free ebook. What to do if you have been charged with a crime in Texas. I'll be happy to send that over to you. Click down into the description section of the YouTube video, input your email address, and we'll send that right over to you. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and I'll send you more great content just like this. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next time.